into another RD Works Learning Lab. Um, we're currently looking into the light blade machine and what you see there are the two molybdenum mirrors that are taken out of mirror number one and number two. Now I've replaced mirror number one and number two with the gold mirrors, the copper mirrors that are supposedly gold plated. And what I've done is some tests which show me that I'm losing about 10% across those two mirrors, 10% power across those two mirrors. So again, it's confirming the result that we found in the previous work that we did in uh, part one of the copper mirror saga. I'm not going to attempt to modify those mirrors myself to convert them back to copper mirrors. Yeah, I think I've adequately proved that I'm unable to lap the mirrors flat. And sadly, the Christmas period has intervened and I've not been able to do anything about sending them away to get them relapsed as copper mirrors. Now, one thing that you might be interested in is knowing that I took those gold mirrors to a jeweler over the Christmas holiday. Jewelers have the ability to test for the purity of gold. And I asked him if he could check whether it was nine, 18 or 24 karat gold plating on those mirrors. He failed completely to test anything and I think that just about sums up the gold plating. Well I kindly call it gold plating but who knows what it is. The one thing I can say is it's shiny and yellow but it probably isn't gold because it doesn't perform like gold. But nonetheless I'm going to leave those mirrors in here and we're going to carry on with a project. Right, now even though I'm using two gold mirrors on here, which have lost me about 10% of the power, and this uh, tube is not the most powerful tube in the world, I'm using a one and a half inch lens that I've made, and it's still doing a pretty good job of cutting this two millimetre acrylic. I'm cutting it at about 20 millimetres a second, and I'm using maximum power which is about 55 watts. So with a bit of luck, you will see that when I lift the pieces out, they will all stay behind. Give or take a little teeny weeny bit of help. So that shows you we've got a really nice clean cut. And obviously I'm using the honeycomb bed, which I normally don't use, but I have found it very, very useful for doing this sort of work on acrylic. Because on the back, I've also got um, some protective film. And as you can see, in places like this, look, it has marked it, but it doesn't matter because I removed the marks with the film. So what I'm saying here is that the gold mirrors, although they are <laughs> not very good in my eyes, a normal non-critical person would not really notice the difference because the performance of this machine is still pretty damn good. Now I've got two sets of parts here. I've got one set of parts that's going to make a Mark 7 pointer for my Chinese blue machine and one set of parts which is going to make a laser pointer for this machine which is the light blade machine. The difference between them is this particular arrangement here is to suit 27 millimeter diameter water jacket and this one here is to suit a 28 millimeter diameter water jacket. I can't mix them up because the centers will move to a different position. Um, I have to apologize yet again for inflicting another laser pointer onto you. I made a laser pointer to suit this particular light blade machine because I had a serious limitations on the space between the laser tube and the first mirror. When I reset the machine, I actually increased the, the gap between the mirror and the, the laser tube by putting this extension on the back here. So I've increased the gap by 30 millimeters, which means I've got all sorts of room to play with now to take the best elements of that design 
and make it even simpler. The water jacket on each of these machines is different diameter and I'm locating off the outside of the water jacket. But I'm going to demonstrate the pointer at the moment for the China Blue machine. And with a bit of luck, I've made it even simpler and easier to manufacture than the previous version. It's certainly more compact now because I don't have to pull the screws way, way outside the zone where the mirror is likely to be. Now we start off by assembling this item here and we're trying to find which, which direction we're going to put this in. So this is the one with the, re with the hexagonal hole in it and what I'm going to do is to find that that one sits and lines up with this one. So what I'm going to do is take one of these nuts and if I've got the dimensions of this hole right I should find that the nut will be a snug fit in there because I've put little radiuses on the corner of the hexagon so the nut will not fall out. And then we should be able to put this on the other side of it and pop that into that slot there. And then we should find we've got one of these which fits over the top there like that and locks the whole thing into place. Now, on the opposite corner, we've got a slightly different problem because we have to put one of our M3 screws through this hole first. And we hold that screw in place with another of the M3 nuts. And we just put a little bit of tension on the nut just to hold it in place. And now we've got to do something similar with this one. So what I'm going to do is push the nut in from this side because the nut doesn't sit flush. It sits flush with the back but not quite flush with the front. Now it's got to be flush that way. And you'll see that as we put these in we've got the screw sitting in a gap underneath there. And now we can put this one on top and the screw sits in a little pocket that's underneath the corner there which is why we have to put the screw in first because we can't glue this together and then put the screws. Right here we've got my glue that I use, my watery glue that I use for bonding the acrylic together and we'll just put some glue around these joints. Okay, well 30 seconds is enough to get it bonded and then we can move it around and leave it to dry. These are self-adhesive labels that come on a waxy paper. Well I throw the labels away because I don't need those anymore and I use this lovely shiny waxy paper. It's fantastic for mixing glue on. Now my glue is uh, a fast securing um, acrylic adhesive but it doesn't have to be. Araldite will do this job just as well. Now the nuts will retain themselves in those holes if I've got the dimensions right. So I've got my very fast curing glue here which gives me somewhere in region of about two or three minutes. And I'll just mix up a very small amount and here's where the paper clip comes in. Because I don't want this stuff to, it's very runny once it's, uh, once it's mixed up. So just mix it up till it looks grey, just to lock the nuts into the acrylic wheel. So I get three or four minutes in which to get this glue in place and after that it becomes very difficult to use. So we leave those for about five minutes and they will go off hard. In the meantime we'll assemble the next piece. This has already now gone off nicely. If you look carefully at these four pieces you'll see that three of them are like little dogs and they've got a little snubby nose on them. One of them has got its nose missing. Push that to one side because we don't want that yet. Right now we're going to have this piece here which is the big piece with the two holes at the outside here, these two slots. 
sitting at around about five o'clock. And then we're going to look for the hole that's in line with it. And there's a little location hole there, you'll see. And we're going to set this so that this matches up with it, like that. OK, now, ideally, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to set these little pieces here, the ones with the noses in, they've got to pass through these slots here and hopefully they should be a snug fit if we've got it right and then they will sit in there like that we just want the ones with the noses on so we'll put the one on opposite that's quite a snug fit and then we'll put one of this we'll put this third one in we're now going to take our laser diode and what we're going to try and do is to pop the laser diode into the hole that's in the middle there so what we've got to do we've got to get the little noses to line up and sit in the little retaining slot that's round the outside so when we put that back on there make sure we get the hole lined up correctly like that we push everything together it should be nice and firm and snug and then we can put the fourth one without any nose on into place and with any luck we should find that this is nice and solid and it doesn't move around so it's nice and solid and then what I'm going to do just to be sure to be sure we're going to put a little bit of glue along these pieces just to hold them in place just to keep everything really nice and rigid and solid so I'm going to hold all that together Pushing, I'm pushing it inwards onto the laser diode. We just need to hold it for about 30 seconds. While we're waiting for this piece to just cure off, we'll just put the other screw through the other hole and we will fix that in place with a nut as well. And we'll just lock it up. OK, now this is dry enough now, so what we should do is we'll thread these cables very carefully through the little hole that's in here opposite these two slots. We we'll very carefully fold it over, trying not to break the cable. We will eventually be tie wrapping those with those two slots there. What I want you to do is to look at the top here and you'll see the two nuts like that. Now what you've now got is like a little universal ball joint which allows the laser pointer to pivot around. What I found was that yeah we could use springs and I tried using springs. Springs are not the most successful thing in the world because they've got a tendency to lock on these threads because the plate is at such a steep angle. What I did find was that a very successful method was to use an elastic band. So we can take a small elastic band and we can put a couple of twists on that elastic band and that makes a very successful and very flexible non-locking spring mechanism. Now we hunt down these little washers that we've made and we just pop those two washers over the screws and now we should find that our nuts are well and truly set and we can wind our wheels and let's assume the ideal position is in the centre we'll wind the screws on till the plates are approximately parallel with each other And there we have it all secured. So there's our battery box with the extension cable on it. 
we'll just slip a couple of batteries in the battery box, a couple of AA batteries, and and there we go. As you can see, that's quite a nice little red dot. That's good enough for doing what we want. It's about two, three millimeters diameter. And even as I move further back to about two meters now, we're still somewhere in the, it doesn't look as though it's changed its diameter. The only thing that happens is the spread around the outside has increased. And finally, just a couple of clamp screws for clamping it onto the water jacket. We'll just pop this onto the water jacket. That's sitting on there nice and snug now. Now we'll turn some power on. But that black mark there, which is well out of position because I've been messing around with this machine, but that's where the burn, that's where the laser beam is pointed at the moment. So what I need to do is to find out, we'll just adjust it so we can get it approximately into line towards the middle of the second mirror. I can see where the spot is on the mirror. And we can see that it's now on target number three. So what I can now do is physically adjust it from this end to get it onto the correct position for target number three. Steer the beam around very nicely with those little knobs. And there we go, give or take a little bit, that's perfect. So that gives me a good representation of where the beam is now and I can take all my mirrors out and mess around with them. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that. That's a very nice little uh, manifestation of the uh, laser point. It's nice and easy to use. I've got plenty of space here. On the other machine, again, I've increased that to about 40 or 50 millimetres as well by pushing the tube back. So this will work on both machines now. I'm very happy with it. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I'll catch up with you again next time.